Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another really cool, interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Civivi Asticus in stainless Damascus. Very, very cool. Uh, this is uh, one that I found to be very attractive personally, and um, it, uh, I, I feel like it'll probably appeal to a lot of people, and I'll say this right off the bat. It is kind of a, and, and not, not exactly the same thing, but it very much reminds me in terms of the overall profile of the ZT0452CF, which is a fantastic knife but it's very, very expensive. So if you've uh, if you've ever lusted after that knife and thought, boy, that's really nice, but I don't know that I wanna spend $240 on it, this one might be a little bit more up your alley. Um, this comes in a wide variety of different colors and it also comes in a standard D2 blade. Every now and then Civivi uses 9CR18 MOV, but I feel like they're moving to D2, so I think I'm correct about that. In any case, all of the different variants, including this Damascus variant, will be included down in the description so you can check this knife out for yourself. Uh, this knife was sent by the Apex Pass Run Group, so by extension, Civivi uh, themselves. Thank you so much for that. Um, also, thank you so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. If you'd like to check out my Patreon, there is, of course, a link down in the description. You can get your hands on some cool stickers and some other exclusive benefits. The support would mean the world to me. Let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. This is certainly not a small knife, which is another reason why it reminds me so much of the ZT0452. Uh, overall length is coming in at 8.75 inches overall. Blade length is coming in at about 3. Point, maybe 3.8, maybe just 3.75. Cutting edge is coming in at right at, it's like 3.4. How about some size comparisons? Let's move this guy down here real quick. Up against the Ontario Rat, Model 1, Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall, so it is definitely larger or longer than the Rat 1. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. There was some debris on that Spyderco, and I'm going to move that because this background shows everything. And uh, how about up against the Benchmade uh, Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. Last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. How's the action of this guy? Well, it runs on bearings, and uh, like every other Civivi I've ever felt, um, well, not all Civivis run on bearings, but they all have very snappy actions. Nice uh, detent click, nice click there, nice snap into place. Very, very solid. Uh, it's more of a kind of a shake shut, right? It's not absolutely false shut. The blade is long, but it's very, very thin. Um, this is an action that is um, really, they, they have kind of set the standard for this price range. This is not an expensive knife. It is made in China. I mean, as compared with a lot of the other knives that I review. Um, and uh, the Civivi's, uh, you know, their knives are have some of the best action on bearings in this price range, price range that, that exists. So I'm very, very happy with that. On top of that, um, the, uh, the flipper tab is very unobtrusive and it's easy to engage. The jipping on it is not super aggressive, so it's easy to do this over and over and over again. The area down here where the liner lock is has some jimping on it, and that's a little bit aggressive. And I've noticed over time, the thing that uh, wears out with me is my thumb just a little bit. After about 20 or so flips, if you like to sit around and flip your knife on the couch, you're going to feel that on your thumb. But there's no double clutch, and that's really the only thing that I can nitpick there. The action is fantastic. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy. Get out my handy-dandy Wea bit selector and Wea magnetic driver, two items that are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in the Amazon store that I referenced at the beginning of every single video. Just pull up in the store and look for knife maintenance. Uh, I believe like most Civivis, we're looking at a T8 pivot. Yep. And how about the body screw? It is also T8. Now the pocket clip screws on this side uh, and this looks to be, yeah, the pocket clip can be switched. The, the pocket clip screws are gonna be T6. So that's okay. We have unbelievably minimal hardware. Now underneath this scale, let's see here. Underneath that scale, I wonder if we actually have another screw. Most likely because there is a standoff there. So there is likely another screw underneath there uh, that is a T6. But again, it's not really a deal breaker. I don't really like T6 uh, because the bits can strip and the heads can strip, but it's not really that big of a deal. There's not a lot of hardware on this knife and I can't really fault it for that. 
How about carry profile? So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3, you can see there that we have liners and then we have an overlay on top. I mean, you call them scales, overlays, whatever. Combined thickness, it is definitely a little bit thicker than the Para 3, but not substantially. Not anything to worry about. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of length and height up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3 two knives that have unquestionably awkward carry profiles that nobody ever complains about, you can see that it is just... Is it just a tad longer than the PM2? It might be right the, exactly the same length, but it is a bigger knife with a much longer blade, much more cutting edge, right, than the PM2. And it's definitely longer than the uh, Pair 3, but in terms of height, nowhere near as, as tall. Uh, this thing is uh, much more narrow. So if you like to carry a larger knife, but you're, you know, a lot of larger knives that, you, that you've seen seem to take up a lot of room in the pocket, this one's got a little bit more of a narrow profile and it's gonna be more friendly in that way. Let's go ahead and take a measurement of blade stock thickness. Uh, blade stock thickness on this guy is coming in very thin, 115 thousandths. We'll go ahead and do that again just to double check it because it looked like we may have been on, yeah, let's make sure that we are on the thickest part of the blade. Okay, we're saying 117 thousandths there. So it is likely about 115 thousandths. I don't 100% trust my calipers. Yeah, uh, my calipers are saying 117 thousandths, so not very thick on the spine at all. The liners are steel, and you can see there on the inside, they actually are milled out just a little bit. So while this is definitely what I'd call a large knife, teetering on XL sized, at least in my book, we are coming in at 3.95 ounces. <laughs> uh, that's almost an ounce an inch on a nearly uh, four inch blade. So people who go by that measurement are gonna be very happy. I feel like people who like to carry large knives in general, but are bothered by excess weight are gonna be happy with this. If you wear really tight pants or you wear athletic shorts every day, this still might not be your cup of tea, but regular pants or, you know, if you go by the four, if, you, if you're just like, hey, anything under four ounces, right? You're gonna be good. If you've been carrying the Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight or Bug Out, and anything heavier than that is too heavy for you, sorry, this isn't gonna be for you. Uh, the uh, blade length also is gonna make it illegal in a lot of places, obviously, so use your best judgment before you buy. I think we got through all that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the anatomy of this guy. So we have uh, this sort of shiny, slick carbon fiber on here. Like I said, these do come in uh, G10 variants. Uh, I, you know, this type of carbon fiber is not super appealing to me. When it's just flat and really reflective, it looks a little bit, I don't know, it looks a little bit uh, less classy, ironically, because usually carbon fiber knives, you know, why am I explaining that? The, the, I don't even know if I used irony correctly there. But anyways, um, the, uh, well, yeah, I did. <laughs> anyways, I think the G10 probably looks a little bit better, but that's fine. You know, in terms of uh, the scale, uh, they're going to be uh, located in the same place. So you just kind of choose your preference there. I do like shadow boxing on the scales. And by the way, all the edges and everything are nicely knocked down. There's no sharp edges, anything like that. This is shadow box, but I think it's shadow box a little bit too much. I'm not sure why they decided to leave this area out. Perhaps, uh, you know, it gives the handle a little bit of aesthetic flair. I honestly would have preferred that the scale was much closer to the liner and have them still showing or shadow boxed but uniform all the way around. This area right here, it bothers me. It's like I'm constantly drawn to that one area because there's a little bit more showing. Does it matter while you're using the knife? No, it honestly does not. In fact, ergonomically, there's so much handle room on this guy. I mean, there's no specific place for your hand so you can kind of move around. And this is a nice, large choil. You can get your full finger in there. That flipper tab is not so obtrusive that it's really forcing you into one specific spot. So. There's nothing really locking you in here. There's not a lot of traction. There's not a lot of uh, you know obvious places to put your fingers, but you can lock in up here. And truthfully, this is a very comfortable knife. And I, I like ergonomic freedom and this, this knife absolutely gives it to you. So I don't have anything to complain about there. Really, again, my only complaints are aesthetically how the overlay is set on top of the frame. I always like how Civivi puts their logo on the pivot. It keeps that off of the blade which is very preferable in this case because we have this beautiful stainless Damascus blade with nothing on it. A sterile Damascus blade. That's wonderful. It's, it really bothers me to see um, excess printing on any blade, right? Usually I'm okay with you know the maker's logo and then on the other side it just says the steel. 
right? But it, that, even that bothers me on a Damascus blade because it's like, come on. I mean, this is like the, the idea here is, you know, the, the aesthetics of it are very, very enjoyable. I mean, obviously there are utilitarian benefits to, you know, properly formed Damascus, but I just like looking at it. A lot of people who buy these knives just like looking at it. We don't want, um, you know, it being muddied up by the logo and a bunch of other stuff. And they did this perfectly. It's so beautiful. It's nice. I don't know if we call this a straight back blade or if we want to call it a drop point blade. It's some variant of that. But we've got a swedge that runs through about the upper, you know, about the top 80% of the knife. Or this, the flat runs through here and then there's a nice swedge. The flat ends completely at about 50% the length of the blade. There is not a lot of thickness out here, so this is going to be a delicate tip. But it is going to be really, really good for puncture tasks. And guys, this edge gets so nice and thin. This is a performance blade for sure. You're going to be very happy uh, pushing that blade through material. There's nothing in the cutting path. It's ready to go. And on top of that, of course... There's no sharp edges up here. Everything's been knocked down. This is a beautifully formed blade. Um, now, this isn't going to be hyper-performance oriented Damascus. I would imagine you can expect performance similar to maybe VG10, something like that. Um, but it is, to my knowledge, stainless Damascus, so you won't have to baby it as much as other forms of Damascus. And reports from uh, Civivi's stuff, you know, from other people, suggest that this is really, really well done. And it's not just something that you just have to, you know, mount or, or, you know, display somewhere. It's really something that you can go out and use. So I think that's great. Um, like I said, that um, the disengagement on the liner is, I mean, it's very easy to access, but it does get a little tiresome over time. Flipper tab, not a big deal. The area where the uh, liner is, you know, the jimping right here, it's a little bit in excess. It would have been nice to have that knocked down just a little bit. They opted for just a screw here or just screw holes here and not uh, to have it set in um, to the uh, to the uh, face there. Um, I always like it when it's set in because it gives me a little bit more confidence in the in the pocket clip. I hate feeling play in the pocket clip. And what I mean by that is when the pocket clip is wiggling around like this and it's usually designs like this where there's two screws just holding it in, right? And it, it, it's dependent fully on the tightness of the screw. So if those screws back out a little bit over time, it'll wiggle a little bit. Whereas if it's set into the frame, it won't wiggle. Well, I mean, you know, either way, you're going to have to make sure that you're you're tightening these things down. But usually, if I'm being honest, those screws don't regularly come loose unless you're really throwing this thing around. So people who don't like that cutout will enjoy that there's really nothing on this side except for the two holes and a screw that's holding the um, overlay into the, the frame there. On the other side, it is much the same as the front, except you have the adjustment head, which is black. I think that looks nice. Uh, either direction looks nice on this knife. Um, there is no lanyard hole. It's just a lanyard bar back here that's part of the backspacer. Now, the backspacer appears to be... I don't think that that's G10. Let's take a look here in the light. That is kind of fibrous. Maybe that is a G10 backspacer. I could be wrong. You can see there um, it is possibly G10. It is possibly plastic. I don't really know. I'll let you guys use your best judgment there. The pocket clip is a typical Civivi pocket clip. These are fine. They work. I mean, if I was grading, a, if this was a paper I was grading, I'd give it a C minus. It's okay. It's deep carry. The screws are not recessed and it has one of these bills that's inevitably going to catch something and bend out. You guys know the, the drill here. I, more, I much prefer more of a swoop like on the MXG deep carry clip. I think that Civivi could really start knocking it out of the park with people if they changed up their clip designs. We see the same clip on every single knife. Uh, case in point, my Praxis. Uh, it's the exact same clip. It's okay. It functions. I mean, functionally, if you're just like, I just want to know if the thing carries, you know, well in the pocket and it's easy to get in and over the pants. Yeah, it is. I just, uh, the, the clip looks so stamped and pressed to me and I'm really coming down on the clip and I, and I don't want to emphasize that because the clip is the same on every Civivi knife, like I said, but I'm just, I'm ready for a different clip. I'm ready for something, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, it, it's okay if they want to do the universal thing. Because it saves them money, I'm sure, rather than designing a clip that goes specific with each design, which would inevitably cost us all a little bit more money, right? It would cost them more time. So I, I can understand why they do this, but I, I think I'm I'm kind of, I'm over this clip. It's okay. It's functional. That's kind of what I think. The knife locks up at about 50% mm, or so, and it is 100% dead solid and dead centered, which is what I expect from Civivi. So again, what can I nitpick here? 
The blade's a little bit long, uh, for, you know, especially for some people. For me, I wouldn't have a problem with this. Um, the um, shadow boxing on the scale, again, this area up here, I just want it even all the way around. I want it closer to the liner, but that's an aesthetic thing. Functionally, um, the liner over time is really going to bother your thumb. Um, but, um, you know, if you're just getting it out a couple of times a day and you're using it, putting it back away, you're not really going to notice that. I'm over the clip. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I wish that it was something different. I wish the clip was set into the frame, even though that would kind of, you know, if they decided to leave this side exactly the same and not mill a, a spot for it, then that would kind of screw lefties. Or if they did mill a spot in here, I can understand aesthetically that's not uh, optimal. It's just my thoughts. Um, and uh, what was the other thing? Was there something else? Um, I, I suppose for some people it might be a little bit heavy, but it really isn't going to be that big of a deal. So um, all of this stuff is pretty nitpicky. Um, really, I mean, truthfully, the biggest complaint is just this spot right here. The jimping right there is a little bit, a little bit aggressive and bothersome to my finger, but I just don't, it's just not that big of a deal to me. These knives come in at, I think standard D2 and G10, they come in at between 50 and $55, which again, I will be leaving links down below. This guy comes in at about $76, the carbon fiber and the, um, uh, Damascus variant. That's another thing that I didn't really talk about. Um, this carbon fiber, you know, a lot of times on these budget knives, the carbon fiber is always the same. It's kind of that really reflective sort of cheap looking carbon fiber. Um, I understand, you know, like some people really like carbon fiber and this is what they do in this price range to keep the cost down. Um, I just don't like it as much, but you know, they, you don't have to go with the carbon fiber. So I can't really, you know, come down on too much for that. Um, but yeah, for 50 to 55 bucks, can I recommend this knife on the, in the base form? You betcha. This knife is going to go in my most recommended knives playlist as well as my cheap knives I like playlist. Can I recommend the carbon fiber in Damascus one at $76? Yeah, <laughs> it's worth it to me. I think this is cool. Whether you, uh, you know, if you plan to really go out and use it and beat on it, um, you know, maybe the G10 and D2 one would serve you better. But this one can absolutely be taken out and beat on. Absolutely. It won't have the same type of performance as D2, right? If you really like carbon fiber, you really like your pocket knife to be something flashy and, you know, more of a conversation piece, then yeah, I can recommend this one as well. This is really, really cool, especially, like I said, for people who have really lusted after the ZT0452, but didn't want to spend that much money on it. This is a wonderful variant, not quite as large, but takes it on a similar profile. And I think it has an aesthetic that a lot of people will find pleasing. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.